So my journey through playing the mainline Toho games has finally reached its conclusion. Well, not really. I know, I know, a lot of you are probably screaming right now. Hey Sleepless, you forgot Toho 19. Hey Sleepless, when are you going to be playing through extra hey, Sleepless, stages? what about the spin-offs? Hey, you still what have PC the bullet to play Double through, spoiler. you know, you gotta go through those what old games. What about the fairy wars? Best Where is the all. Land in 4 video? Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. I have merely scratched the surface when it comes to Toho content, but at the very least, I have cleared enough of the games to be able to rank them for today's video, and that's good enough for now, I'd say. You've all heard my opinion on how fun I think the games are, and what I like and dislike about the games, their mechanics, the characters, and all that jazz. But I haven't really talked about how difficult I find each one. So that's exactly what we're doing today. Join me as I go through the mainline Windows Toho games and shed some light on which ones I think are easy, which ones are just average, and which ones put me through hell. I'm sure you've all been wanting to hear my personal rankings for a while now, so let's not delay too much. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the rankings. But of course, not with a little overview. Will this really be a sleepless night's video without some banter before the main chorus? Well, of course not. So allow me to give a couple more words before we get into the actual ranking. Firstly, no, this ranking will not include the two player games, more specifically Toho 9 and Toho 19. I'm sure the reasoning for this is pretty obvious, but I'll explain nonetheless. These two games have very different gameplay compared to the rest of the mainline entries, so it's pretty hard to gauge the difficulty alongside all the other games. Just the way you lose lives is vastly different from your standard Toho game, not to mention there's more than 6 stages. The only thing keeping these games mainline in my opinion is the fact that they're numbered as a mainline game, but otherwise, they probably play closer to the spin-offs. Not that I've personally played the spin-offs, but that's just an assumption. Next, I'm ranking difficulty based on a normal 1cc only. I have not cleared the games on any other difficulty, and I think basing the game's difficulty on a 1cc is the most fair thing I can do. Clearing a 1cc means you can make use of all the game's mechanics and abuse what you can abuse in order to stay alive. This ranking will not be focused exclusively on how hard the patterns are or how good specific shot types are, but will be more focused around how the game's difficulty balances around playing through all of its mechanics, be it useless or broken. Finally, no, I will not be including extra stages as a factor to the difficulty of the game. I know people really want me to talk about the extra stages, but that's a topic for another day. I've gotten a couple comments complaining about me skipping extra, thinking I'll never ever touch it, but that's not really the case. I love the extra cast despite only clearing one extra stage so far, with some of my favorite characters in the series being extra bosses such as Koishi and Yukari. I have a lot of Toho content planned out for the future, so I'm just asking for a bit of patience on your guys' end. Finally, with all that out of the way, allow me to rank the very first game for this video, and the first D-tier difficulty game. Coming in at number 12 is Toho 7 Perfect Cherry Blossom. Ah uh, yes, PCB, the game I've won CC'd the most, and as of now, the only game so far I've cleared the extra stage of. Although I did mention I won't be taking extra into account. If I was doing a ranking based on enjoyment, this game would be much further up the list, but sadly we're talking about difficulty and Perfect Cherry Blossom is a damn easy game. Based on patterns alone, this game isn't very hard. Obviously it's not the easiest when it comes to patterns, we'll get to that one later, and it does have its fair share of difficult damaku, with things like the Prism River Sisters coming to mind. However, this game is far from being difficult when we're talking about even just its bullet patterns alone. The damaku in this game can mostly be just dodged based on your action, and the bosses are mostly very straightforward with the one exception being Yomu. There's really not a lot of gimmicks when it comes to spells and whatnot, and even the gimmicky patterns are pretty sight readable in my opinion. What truly makes this game the easiest of them all to me is how generous it is with its resources. This game just basically hands you every resource for free through the inclusion of the cherry border. Need to tank a hit? Cherry border. Need a free bomb? Cherry border. Need points for an extend? Cherry border. This thing basically just plays half the game for you and I love it for that. Perfect Cherry Blossom really just gives the player so much room for error with how forgiving the game mechanics are. Couple that with some relatively easy bullet patterns and you have yourself the easiest game in the series. Coming in number 11 at D tier, we have Toho 10 Mountain of Faith. I remember a time when I said this game was one of the harder ones and that I thought people were insane for calling this game easy. Oh how times have changed. Mountain of Faith is not too different from Perfect Cherry Blossom in the sense that this game also gives you so much resources to work with. While you may not gain as much extends as you do in PCB, which trust me can be insane sometimes, you do get way, way more bombs. However, unlike PCB, there's a bit of an illusion when it comes to how generous this game is. While Toho 7 just straight up shows to your face that hey, you have a free shield, use it, Mountain of Faith doesn't necessarily make it clear that your bomb is as spammable as it is, and it definitely tricked me the first time around. At first glance, this game seems incredibly stingy with its resources with the whole power equals bomb mechanic. After all, you can see very clearly how limited your bomb is with your power meter decreasing right before your eyes. What you probably won't realize though is just how generous this game is with power. 
Like seriously, I'm pretty sure this is the only game in the series where you can cap out on power before you even end stage 1, it's insane. What this means for the player is that every time you bomb, around 3 fourths of it will probably already be refunded with the amount of power you get from just killing enemies. So why do I put this higher than PCB? Well, it comes down to the fact that the patterns are just slightly more technical. The game's patterns require a lot of streaming, and if you don't know how to do that, well, you're pretty much cooked. Mountain of Faith has a lot more learning in my opinion with its patterns. For example, Kanako at first glance seems way harder than she is if you don't know how to properly deal with your spells. Patterns have a lot more gimmicks to them as well in this game as compared to the simple bullet spam PCB had. Lastly, I put it above PCB simply because stage 4 exists. Aya, I love you, but good lord your stage is a pain in the ass. Now, for our first seat tier game at number 10, we have Toho 13 10 Desires. Now, I'm just gonna let you all on a little secret. Originally, this game was supposed to be the easiest on the list, and for the longest time, I believed it to be the easiest. However, I thought to myself, hey, it's been a while since I last played it, let's fact check that opinion. I... I died at stage 6. I didn't even make it to Miko. So is this game hard? Nah, not by a long shot. However, I do believe it's a bit far from being the easiest. If we're basing difficulty purely on patterns, then yes, 10 Desires is by far the easiest in the series. It has some of the most sight readable, slow, open patterns in the series with so much room to maneuver. What keeps this game from being the easiest though is the fact that the gimmick is pretty damn hard to play around. I don't really want to go too in depth with the trans mechanic and whatnot, and if you guys are looking for a more in depth explanation, just watch the video where I actually covered this game. But if you guys have played 10 Desires, you know how much of a pain resource collection is in this game. 10 Desires is super stingy with extents and very punishing towards deaths. I didn't realize it until today, but the game punishes you super hard for dying in a bad spot. It automatically pops your trance, and most of the time these can be at really awkward moments, essentially wasting a full trance meter in exchange for no resources gained. So while you're already very low on lives with the game's hate for handing out extends, you essentially shoot yourself in the foot even more by not having a trance meter for when it actually matters, which is resource collection. So overall, while this game is a lot easier with its patterns, it's pretty much the polar opposite of the last two games, with it not giving you any room for error, which is why it goes a tier above. For our second C tier game, at number 9, we have Toho 8 Imperishable Night. I know a good chunk of people consider this to be one of the easiest, if not the easiest game in the series, but I kind of disagree. Let's start by stating the obvious, yes, the death bomb timer lasts a decade. Every time you get hit, you get around 3 business days to hit the bomb button before you platoon, meaning it's basically impossible to die as long as you have bombs in your stock. But in my opinion, the easy parts of the game end with that. The patterns in this game are fucking hard in my opinion. Now I don't know if I just suck or what, but even Kane gives me a run for my money sometimes. I suck at Kaguya, I suck at Aerin, I suck at Grayson, and holy shit I suck at Marisa. I don't know if this is just a me thing or what, but Marisa is one of the hardest stage 4 bosses in the series it feels like. Her spells are still super hard to capture for me and it's always so hard to judge the hitbox of her than Mako. The bosses are a bit more gimmicky than Perfect Cherry Blossom here, but it's nothing too outrageous. Mistress Darkness and Grayson's Mind Control are pretty easy to read despite them messing with your vision. The difficulty of the patterns for this game in my opinion just comes from the sheer density of the bullets. This game was terrifying to me starting out as there was just so much shit on the screen at all times. But looking back at it now, the bullets obviously move very slowly, although it's still much more intimidating than the last games I put on the list. Not much to say about Toho 8 apart from that it's a game with some decently hard bullet patterns offset by a very very forgiving bomb system. For the top of C tier, at number 8 we have Toho 18 Unconnected Marketeers. Honestly, I was a bit torn on where exactly to put this game due to the roguelike nature it has. I haven't played this game enough to gauge how much the roguelike mechanics actually affect the difficulty and how much of the game comes down to luck of the draw, but in general I feel like a lot of the cards can somewhat trivialize a good portion of this game. The patterns are at a very consistent above average difficulty in my opinion, not having anything too crazy but can certainly catch you with your pants down on numerous occasions. You definitely need to use your brain a little bit more when it comes to dodging the Danmaku in this game, because on top of it being a bit gimmicky, the bullets can also be quite fast. Of course, this all can be offset by just having a good set of cards which oftentimes will clear the screen or allow you to take a hit or something similar. So while some sections can be scary, you have a lot of panic buttons to rely on whenever you find yourself in a little bit of a pickle. Power loss is also a bit of a pain in this game, and dying can be pretty punishing with you losing a lot more than just a life, but like I said, deaths can be avoided in a lot of different ways. Overall, Unconnected Marketeers is definitely harder than the last couple games, but not hard enough, so top of C tier it goes. Now for our first B tier game sitting at number 7 is none other than good old Toho 6 Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. This game is what I'd like to consider the baseline in terms of difficulty, or even just the general Toho experience. 
is the vanilla ice cream to your Rocky Road and mint chocolate. This game is definitely the most straightforward game in the entire series with literally no gimmicks present in it. The only smidgen of a gimmick Scarlet Devil has is probably Sakya's time stop spell cards and maybe potentially changing spells, but that's it. No special mechanic to save your ass, no shields, no screen clears, no nothing. Talking about bullet patterns, they're also very straightforward, possibly straightforward to a bit of a fault. You see, a lot of the patterns in this game are very RNG reliant and there's a good chance you get walled out of nowhere in this game. The density of Danmaku isn't very high, but the bullet speed is definitely up there, meaning this game could really really catch you with your pants down if you aren't paying enough attention. The game isn't necessarily very stingy with the resources, but it doesn't really give you a lot either. You pretty much just get enough extents to survive, but not enough to be able to make careless mistakes and be unpunished for it. The margin for error isn't too strict, but you don't really want to get too comfortable either as this game can go downhill very quickly if you're not locked in. Is this the most fair game? No, not really. Patterns can be bullshit at times, but I'd say in terms of difficulty, it's right dead center for the entire series. Next up on B tier, sitting at number 6, is Toho 17, Wily Beast and Weakest Creature. Honestly, I really don't have much to comment on about this game other than it's just consistently slightly above average in terms of difficulty. The gimmick, while pretty powerful, can still bite you in the ass if you aren't careful and get too greedy. Yes, you get a lot of shields and screen clears in this game, but they aren't just handed out to you willy-nilly unlike a game like PCB or UM for example. While the beast spirits aren't necessarily as difficult to get as their alien counterpart, they still add a certain risk factor to the gameplay that forces you to step outside your comfort zone even if only just a little. The bosses do pose a threat for the most part and demand a good bit of focus from the player. Mayumi can be very overwhelming, Yachia can mess you up if you aren't paying enough attention, and Kiki can be a pretty long drawn out battle. Not even to mention the stages in this game aren't to be taken lightly either with some pretty high bullet density present in some of them. Bullet visibility is another thing that slightly adds to the difficulty of this game. Yes, it's kind of bullshit, but it's part of the game nonetheless, and the bullets can be very difficult to see sometimes. Color contrast is absolutely awful on some sections, and the projectiles tend to sneak up on you out of nowhere. Toho 17 is definitely no pushover, but it has some mechanics present in it that can really help out the player in some very sticky situations, which is why it lands in the middle of B tier. Coming up next, still in the middle of B tier, but just scraping the number 5 spot, is Toho 16 Hidden Star in 4 Seasons. Now, I know what you all are going to say, this game is very generous when it comes to resources, and I agree. This game is probably one of the most generous when it comes to extends, and you can certainly stop by a lot of lives in this game. In my opinion though, just like how it's easy to gather a bunch of lives, it's also pretty damn easy to lose them all in a flash. The patterns in this game are just very solidly difficult in my honest opinion. Now, they're not disgustingly hard, don't get me wrong, but they are far from easy. Similar to Toho 8, bullet density is pretty high in this game, but unlike Toho 8, they move pretty fast this time. Not to mention that this game has the exact same issue Toho 17 has, if not even worse. The bullets are so damn hard to see sometimes. The bosses in this game really got me sweating on numerous occasions, the dancers in stage 5 come to mind first and foremost. There's some absolutely brutal patterns present in this game that seem to just come out of nowhere and a lot of the time I can't get by without popping a bomb or release. Speaking of which, yes, releases. You can argue that releases are very spammable and make the game easier, but you have to remember two things. One, they're not a bomb. They don't make you invincible or delete the whole screen, only a portion of the bullets in front of you. You're not completely safe when popping a release, and you can certainly still tank a hit if you're not careful. 2. You sacrifice damage every time you use a release. Your release relies on your season bar, which in turn is something that is strengthening your shots, so yes, while you can use releases quite often, it also ends in you doing less damage to whatever you're fighting as a trade-off, which is pretty fair in my opinion. There's just not as much room for error as it seems with this game, and it definitely demands you play well or get wiped halfway through it. At the top of B tier and at the number 4 spot, we have Toho 14 Double Dealing Character. High Risk, High Reward is the name of this game, and oh boy can it punish you for taking risks. This game, like Hidden Star in 4 Seasons, can be very generous with its resources. You get life pieces every minute it feels like, and some shot types like Sakya A give you so much bombs to work with. Like I said though, this game is very high risk, high reward, and in order to reap that reward, you have to plunge head first into danger. The POC gimmick is very fun in my opinion, but it also adds a whole new layer of pressure to the gameplay. Seeing a bunch of items on the screen just gives you an insane temptation to ram head first into bullets while trying to get to the top of the screen, it's nuts. A lot of this game is just fighting that monkey brain temptation to POC a bunch of items in order to hoard resources, and it's a lot easier said than done most of the time. A lot of my deaths playing this game have been me just greeting for the POC and dying to some random fairy spawning in or something stupid like that. To be honest though, that's just one half of it. There's another reason why this game is placed at number 4 and that is because the patterns are actually pretty difficult here. 
There's not a single pushover in this game except for maybe Wakasagi him in stage 1 because even Sekibanki forces me to use a bomb sometimes. The second half bosses are on a whole different level though. Ben Ben has some insane micro dodging, Seija has their screen flip bullshit, and Shimmy brings every trick in the book to make sure you fucking die. Honestly, I'd say Shimmy Amari contests the top spot for hardest stage 6 boss in the series. I have no idea if this is just a me thing or what, but this boss is just plain difficult, man. Either way, the crutch that is the generous resources isn't really enough to mitigate everything else this game throws at you in my opinion, which is why it sits comfortably at the top of B tier. Now, for the first and only game on A tier sitting at the number 3 spot, we have Toho 11 Subterranean Animism. There's a couple of reasons why this game is the only one I put on A tier. Firstly, I'd say when it comes to difficulty, this is the most fair in the series. This matters because the two games I have on S are just a different type of bullshit. Next reason is that I can't on good faith put this game on the same tier as everything else below it since without a doubt, this game is fucking hard. This game, like Mountain of Faith and Scarlet Devil, is one of the most straightforward in the series, with no obtrusive gimmick present in it. The thing with this game though, and another reason why I can't bring myself to rank it any higher than 8 tier, is that it gets easier the more you play it. Toho 11 feels absolutely impossible when you first start playing it, even just stage 2 feels like an insurmountable wall, but the thing is, this game just requires knowledge and practice to beat. Subterranean Animism, while being difficult, is probably the most consistent game to beat. If you can do it once, you can pretty much do it every time. Yes, some bosses like Orin can fuck your shit up, but there's some cheese and safe spots you can abuse at any time. Now, obviously, not every boss is cheesable, but every boss is very learnable and consistent to do. Even the patterns that are pretty random have a flow to them that allows you to clear them almost every time. The resources, while a bit dry, aren't really as stingy as it seems provided you play well. Unlike the other games, you don't necessarily need to go out of your way to collect lives, but rather, you just have to survive. That's it. The reason why this game is considered hard not just by myself but many others I believe can be attributed to its demand for flawless play. It expects no sloppiness from the player and the moment your attention fades for even a split second it can beat you into the ground. Keep a clear head and focused mind however and you'll find yourself taming this beast of a game. Coming in at the bottom of S tier and at the number 2 spot, we have Toho 12 Undefined Fantastic Object. Obligatory I hate this game out of the way, this game is fucking hard and not for the right reasons. Pattern wise, I'd say it's around the same difficulty as Subterranean Animism, albeit instead of having very consistent route based patterns, UFO has very random reaction based patterns. This game doesn't reward you much for practicing bosses, and this is something I learned the hard way after bashing my head against Sho and Byakker and in practice to no avail. This game consists of very dense, somewhat slow moving random shots and demands a lot of micro dodging to get through. Well, that and curvy lasers. Fuck curvy lasers. Now obviously though, as we all know, 90% of this game's difficulty comes from the gimmick alone. These little flying shits are literal death traps and the bane of my existence. UFOs are literally greed incarnate. If you thought trying to POC in double dealing character was a lot of pressure, wait till you see a blinking red UFO while having two other red UFOs in your stock. Talking to Danmaku isn't that bad on its own, but it's just so easy to tunnel vision on the UFOs bouncing around that you just ignore the literal wall of bullets right in front of you and ram head first into one. Yes, I'm aware the UFO spawns are consistent and the same colors spawn at the same spot and whatnot, but it really doesn't make it any less of a pain to chase after them, especially considering that the bullet patterns in the stages can be pretty random. UFO is really not a game I can recommend to people just starting out, and it definitely demands you be at a certain skill level before you're able to once you see it. There's a lot of pure reaction and micro dodging is needed from the player, and the game insists you beat the skill requirement or instead get folded. Finally, at the top of S tier and claiming the number one spot for hardest game in the series, to absolutely no one's surprise, is To 15 Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom. What even is there to explain about this placement? It's Toho 15 for crying out loud, I mean just look at this and tell me this isn't the hardest game. I know, I know, some of you might be saying for a normal 1cc, Toho 15 might not be the hardest with some of the broken shot types it has like Sanai and Raisin, but uh, honestly I don't give a shit. Yes, this game can be very generous with extends, yes Sanai and Raisin's bomb can be pretty fucking busted, yes Sanai has the infinite bomb exploit, but just the fact that even with these factors present, the game still remains on par with at least subterranean animism in terms of difficulty speaks volumes on how hard this game is. Even with all these crutches the game hands you, it's still capable of absolutely mopping the floor with you. It doesn't matter if you get like 8 extends when you lose 2 thirds of it by the time you reach Dorami at stage 3, it's nuts. Anyway, just the fact that Clown Piece is in this game should already cement it as the hardest, as she is without a doubt the hardest non-extra boss in the series in my opinion. 
Her fight lasts ages, her bullets move at light speed, her nons are beefy as hell, two survival spells, lasers, it's a whole package with this boss. Not even to mention immediately after, we have the second hardest boss in the series in my opinion, Junko. I hope Toad 12 prepared you good with its micro dodging since this boss is just purely that. Purely micro dodging, purely anger, purely bullet hell. I know I said at the start of the video that this list isn't based on bullet pattern difficulty alone, but Jesus Christ the Danmaku in this game is so insanely difficult that it just negates any other mechanic present in it. My heart goes out to anyone who has once seen this game on higher difficulties on Raymo or Marisa. You all are the true heroes of our generation. Without a doubt, the hardest game in the series with nothing that comes close to its level. And there you have it, the mainline Windows games all ranked easiest to hardest. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment about how you feel and let's all argue in the replies together. But be aware though, my ranking is the only factual one in the world and is objectively correct. Anyway, I'm super excited for the future of Toho content on this channel and I'm super excited to bring you all more awesome videos surrounding this series. Way more content not only like this but other fun stuff as well is on the horizon so I hope you all keep your eyes peeled for those. As always, if you enjoyed the video, do the usual thing. Leave a like, comment, maybe sub if you haven't. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.